Thank you for joining us today on TV Bakwetu. My name is Elias Munsha. We have decided to come a little bit earlier than our usual time. The reason is because we have a lot of exciting things for you today, as usual, all the time. Kindly share our link with as many people as possible, and then we are going to introduce our guest today. Now here in Calgary, Alberta, it's 12.48, almost midday, lunch hour. And I don't know what time it is in Scotland where General Chipakupaku is. General, good evening. Good, good evening. To, good evening to Ampala. Good evening, Zambia. And good evening, our viewers all over, including the viewers in Calabo, if there are any viewers in Calabo, because we have somebody special from Calabo. And uh, in Scotland, uh, it's 19.48 or 7.48 p.m. in the evening. All right. And I guess then in Chuapala, it will be about 20? If it's 18... 20.48. It's about 20.48 in Chuapala, in Chadiza, as well as in Calabo, in Liyua, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, in general, there are a few things that have happened today. So what, 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 what is new? What is latest before we bring well, our guests? Our viewers, before we bring in our guests, uh, ECZ and a professor called Professor Munkonka <laughs> are suggesting that they, they will cancel the elections. They will declare a state of emergency and cancel elections because of COVID. Uh, my belief is that uh, Professor Mkonga, who is the director of public health Zambia, is being used to test the waters of the Zambian people. Right. And and he announced this morning, and ECZ supported him and said, look, we might cancel these elections, get ready, but no, we might not. For them to do that, <laughs> you are the lawyer. Yeah, you are okay. the lawyer. It simply means they will have to declare a state of emergency. And right. I think that, that is dangerous. And that, to me, shows some serious desperation. The second item, Monsha, is that the UPND has petitioned the police. And the police even were tried to violence throughout. The destruction of the UPND billboards, the beating of the women in the copper belt, right. uh, yeah. and the, the inspector general was trying to, even refusing to take his call. Right. So there's the third item, or third item is a former sergeant, police sergeant, Jason Chipe Musonda, who has demonstrated right. at the police headquarters. This guy resigned from the police last year because he said the police is becoming very unprofessional. Today he demonstrated right. single-handedly. They arrested him. We don't know where he is. He has been detained. And the so, last so no way about, no information about where he is? At the moment, we don't know where he is. Nobody knows right. where he is. Right, that's that's very sad. So, so can we appeal to the Zambian authorities to let us know where Mr. Chipepom Sonda is? Yes, I think we should. Zambians and Inspector General, we want to know where Jason Chipepo uh, Musonda is because uh, he has not committed any crime. The Constitution allows Zambians to demonstrate, to speak out. So, the way you bundled him in, Inspector General. That is unconstitutional. So I think the Zambians, the Zambians right. need to know where our brother Jason, yeah, Ipepo, Musonda. This is a former police sergeant who saying right. the Inspector General is behaving like a de facto PF Secretary General. Right. Okay. The last. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, General. The last item, the president has signed a statutory instrument today. He's so desperate, trying right. to re, re, remove the VAT on imported oil, cooking oil, so that they can try and reduce the price of cooking oil. But uh, this is a, a very, very strange measure, last minute, because they're so desperate. Those are the four items I have tonight. But, well, the, the, the doctors, they are continuing the, with their ghost law, and right. uh, they are serious and they're proceeding with the postal. Those are the four items I have tonight, uh, Musha. I saw a picture of uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, 
on a boat in Wapula province. Did you see that one? Well, today, I, to be very honest with you, Musha, I didn't follow him, follow him today. I normally follow him. You know, I'm one of those thousands of Zambians who are, who are blocked on his pages. I, I'm not allowed to comment. I can see what he's doing, but I'm not allowed to comment. Because I was blocked by President Lungu, I was blocked by ZNBC, and I was blocked by ETZ. So I'm a, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> I, we, we always know. And, and there is this thing where people like bad boys. I don't know why. There is something attractive about bad boys. Now, we want you to stop being a bad boy, General. We want you to be a good boy. So go back to these pages and play nice. Can you do that? Musha, you cannot change a, a boy from Mumbwa. I'm, I am a boy from Mumbwa. I, can, I, cannot, I cannot be a socialite, as you said. I right. am a boy from Mumbwa. I will be what I am. I will say things as I, 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 I can't pretend, Musha. So I think uh, I, I will just wait for another 72 days. Uh, the president's office will unblock me, I'm sure. When things change, they will unblock me. Is this a, right. is this a, and is and BC the same? It's a, right. they've, they've been blocked. They've blocked me for the past for the past two years now. I think this is it. Blocked me six months ago. All right. Okay. Uh, that's that's quite serious. So we want you to be to be a good boy. I know we can do something over uh, a, for for a boy from Mumbwa because we want you to come from Chuempala. Us from Chuempala are extremely peaceful people. We are good people. So come and join us in Chuempala, okay? <laughs> are you are you taking that offer? No, I'll take the offer. For the sake of Zambia, I'll take the offer, Musha. I'll take that All offer. Right. I'll try and be a very good boy. There, there, there are very few pages that have actually blocked me. Well, Musha, you are lucky. Me, I've been blocked all, all over. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that's why some people were wondering, is General Chipakupaku a real person? No man Chipakupaku, are they a real person? And there you go. And that's why they were uh, they were blocking you probably. Yeah, I think so. I think the president of Zambia thought I was a, um, a ghost as well. So they don't want to hear from ghosts. But the truth is, no man Chipakupaku, the boy from Mumbwa and Chipata is real. I'm not all a right. ghost at all. Yeah. Now, one thing I found about the, the boat picture was the president was on the boat, apparently somewhere in Luapula, Bueso. Um, And I think he was visiting our people in Luapula. But there was quite a huge crowd of people across the river. And so I'm wondering if the president really is talking about COVID and protocols that must be observed, why is he not observing COVID protocols? That's interesting. And uh, when, when you have got so many people uh, receiving him and without masks, that worries me. Right. You are worried about COVID. Me, I'm worried about brown, brown envelopes. Was he carrying some brown envelopes in the body? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure he carries a kasaga gandalama because that's what he tells us, isn't it? Yeah. He goes okay. and he begins distributing cash all over. That's what he said. So I think he was carrying something in the boat. Right. And so, and so breathing money, also distributing COVID while stopping other people like other political parties from campaigning. So, so, so it's like COVID rules are only aimed at others, not him. Yes, I think so. Um, it's just very, very unfair that the rules, the police are unfair. And uh, now we are hearing ECZ is threatening to cancel the elections. And we, 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 we know that even the Minister of Health, they are not of issuing the so-called clearance, health clearances for people to campaign. Right. So it's difficult for the opposition. Right. But having said, having said so, HH right. has arrived with the Copper Belt today. He's arrived very welcome to the Copper Belt. And it's strange. He was attending a funeral and the police were, were blocking him everywhere in the Copper Belt. According to them, HH is, is not supposed to attend a funeral. It's strange, really strange. All right. Today, General, we have a guest. Now, this guest comes from your political party. 
I don't belong to your political party. Maybe I do. I don't know. But but anyway, he's coming from your from your political party. So I expect that you are going to be carrying a lot of favors with him. I think I I have studied economics, but right. I'm also a UPND. I think to be very fair, I will ask you to ask more questions than I do. Right. Because for me, I've been involved with the policy of the UPND, so I don't want to be seen to be favoring Dr. Msokotwan. But you know what? The boy from Mumba is harsh. I tend to ask very tough questions. So please, Munsha, you lead this discussion. I will introduce this man because I know him very well. And then you lead on the questions, but we want to focus on the economy, stupid, right. as Bill Clinton used to call it. Right. Why is our economy in the situation in which it, it is today? Why is this debt problem? Now, General, when you say you want to introduce him, does it mean you are also reading the, his bio? I will read his bio. I want okay. to the, the Zambians to know. It's a very brief bio. This guy right. is a very experienced economist. So I just want to give the Zambians his just, just a brief one. Because if we read his bio, it's pages and pages, but I'll just be brief. All right. Okay. Thank you. We are now going to welcome Dr. Stumbeko Musokotwane on to our show here. General, please introduce our guest. Dr. Musokotwane, Stumbeko Musokotwane, good evening. And uh, the man from the UA, the, the MP, former MP for, for the UA, former Minister of Finance, my, my, my brother, I call him Budi. A lot of people don't know when I say Budi, he knows what I mean. So, Welcome to uh, Backward TV, Dr. Mkokotwani. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, I'm most delighted to be on Backward to TV. Also actually honored, because as we said earlier on, I've been following this very um, TV show for some time, even before uh, you, Honorable Chipaku Paku, joined. All I can say to uh, Advocate Munsha is that uh, thank you. The Zambians through me are saying to you, thank you for providing this alternative uh, ear, alternative voice, because in the public uh, media, the alternative voice is blocked out, but you have provided this alternative uh, voice. And finally, let me also say that uh, Regardless of who wins in August, even if it's UPND, which I hope is going to win, uh, please don't give up on this. Let's not allow any other monster uh, to come in to replace uh, the one that is there that is blocking everybody else. So please continue. Even if I'm part of that government, continue. Watch us, uh, monitor us, Put us on the check. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know I should be asking who is Dr. Musokotwani, but can you give me the honor to just briefly tell the Zambians who my my honorable Stumbeko Musokotwani is? Yes, please. Dr. Musokotwani has got a PhD in monetary economics from the University of Mani. Um, from former West Germany, which is now uh, part of Germany. He has held the following offices. He was lecturer at the University of Zambia, teaching undergraduate students and MA students. And he was teaching uh, macroeconomics, microeconomics, monetary theory, public finance, and econometrics. He has held various positions at the Bank of Zambia, including a big advisor. Uh, to the governor as director of economics, director of financial markets, and then def deputy governor. He also became a cons he was a consultant for a long term consultant uh, to the IMF, IMF um, resident advisor, a long term consultant to the European Union and USID as advisor to Minister of Finance, Zambia. He was secretary to the Treasury under Peter Magande. Who are another good friend, was Deputy Secretary to the uh, Cabinet for Finance and Economics, 
He was economic advisor under President Monawase. He was Minister of Finance under President Rupi Abando. He's from like 2011 MP for, for Liyua and held the following responsibilities under UPND. He's the chairman of, uh, he was the chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on the National Econo Economy and Trade uh, Matters. He's, he was member of um, the Static Parliamentary Forum and the whip, the parliamentary whip of the UPND. And Dr. Msobutan is also chairman of the UPND economic team. So ladies and gentlemen, we are dealing with a very experienced man. We will ask him very honest questions. And yes. we, Dr. Mkotone, we need you to give us the answers. Please don't use jargon, because Zambians don't want to hear jargon. Our audience is full of different people from Chuempala, from Kalabo, and uh, from Mumba. General, are you saying that we people from Chuempala can't understand each sungu, tatumfwa? I know, I know, Mumba. You understand the Chisung, but in economics, him, one, it's not, it's not, it's not Chiwempala language. So I'm just appealing to the professor, to the uh, doctor, please try and use any language, any Zambian language to explain what we mean. Right. So I think I'll kick off. Yes. Dr. Mtokotwani, what do you think is the situation of Zambia's economy? Thank you very much uh, once again. Indeed, I will try my level best not to use jargon. Although, I must also say that I've a lot learned a lot of uh, legal jargon from uh, Advocate Muisha. Really? Uh, yes. Although he's done a very good job, he always does a very good job in breaking down that jargon into something that non-lawyers like myself have been able to follow. So I think I'll try and emulate uh, Advocate Munsha uh, in trying to simplify what I'm going to discuss. Okay, you were talking about uh, what is the current situation of our economy. Uh, the current situation is obviously a difficult one. Mm. This, I think, I need to uh, elaborate because a difficult economy means that people are finding it hard to live. Uh, you earn your money if you are lucky enough to be in employment or in business, and you discover that what you can do with that money now compared to what you were able to do a few years ago. This time around, there's very little that you can do. Out of a hundred quarter, which 10 years ago, you could buy a bag of millimeter, you could buy some carpenter, some cooking oil, some sugar, from hundred quarter. <clears throat> Today, if you have that hundred quarter, you cannot even buy a single bag of millimeter. Right. So the majority of the people out there who are not lucky enough to found money in the manner that some of our citizens are branching money around, the majority of our people are finding life hard. The cost of living right. is going up tremendously. On top of that, more especially for our young people, uh, but even for the middle-aged people, Jobs have become very hard. Mm. Jobs have become very hard. During your time and my time, uh, Mr. Chipakupako, jobs were not something that was uh, uh, a difficult thing to do. We came out of secondary schools, not even colleges. We came out of secondary schools and immediately there were jobs uh, employers were waiting at the gates. When I finished from five in 1974, at the gates, the uh, Zambia Railways was there, uh, Zesco was there, uh, all companies were there to 
try and get hold of young people to employ. Now, let me also say that from um, what are the little that I've said so far, cost of living is high. Jobs are scarce. Doing business is hard because no one, uh, very few people are able to uh, sell. Right. If you go in some of these shopping malls, you find so many empty spaces. The reason why we are all having all these difficulties is that the so-called size of the economy, mm -hmm. the size of the economy. In other words, when you add together what the farmers produce, what the miners produce, uh, the services that the lawyers produce, right. the money we earn from tourism, the summation of all this is what we call the size of the economy, the money that is earned in the economy. What is earned in the economy today is only about 60%. Is only about 60%. The size of the economy is only about 60% of what it was, say, 2013. Can you imagine? Oh, no. That's, only that's about 60%. Yeah. Only about 60%. So, so Dr. Sobotwani, all yeah. this has happened, all this shrinking has happened in the last 10 years. This shrinking, yes, has happened in the last 10 years. There's only one other country that I remember whose economy shrank so much. This, of course, is across the, uh, across the river uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, but there are difficulties. Mm. But for and out of this, side, this situation where the size of the economy is only about 60% of what it was, this is uh, terrible. Right. Now, go ahead, go ahead, Dr. All these things that I was talking about, uh, less money in our pockets, cost of living going high, no jobs, is a reflection of the fact that this economy that has become smaller, each one of us is struggling to get a piece of this smaller economy. Each one of us is struggling to get a piece of this smaller economy. Therefore, for the average person, not those who are swimming in millions of dollars and so forth, but for the average person, logically it follows that life must be hard. Mm. Right. Okay. Life must be hard because there's now, less to share. Okay, let me follow up this one, Musha, before you take over. Right. What are some of the indicators which indicate to you, which can indicate to the whole world and to Zambians from 2011, what are the indicators which, can, which you can show that the economy is not doing well? What was inflation, for instance, in 2011? And what are these indicators, Dr. Absolutani? And probably Mwincha can, can try and help us uh, to explain things like inflation in Impala. I don't know what, the, what, what term you can use. What are the indicators which can show us that the, the economy is not doing well since 2011? Okay. Since we said we shall try and simplify things, let me start by uh, elaborating what you mean by economic indicators so that our colleagues in Chuempala and indeed Kalavo can follow what we are talking about. Right. I can like an indicator to uh, uh, the well-being of a person, the health of a human being. When you go to a doctor uh, with a complaint or even just a normal checkup, right. there are certain vital signs that they will check on you. Okay. Some of those vital signs, uh, learning from some of my uh, friends and relatives who are in the field, they want to check your BP, blood pressure. Right. Is the blood pressure okay or is it normal? Uh, they want to check your um, sugar, in the, sugar that is in the blood. Is it okay or is it not? They want to check your body temperature. Obviously, if it is beyond a certain level, they'll say, hmm, here yeah, there's a problem, okay? Right. Your normal temperature must be reduced. 
So in the health world, in the uh, medical world, those are the vital indicators that tell a doctor or an expert whether there's something to be worried about or your vital indicators are okay. So similar in the economy, there are also those vital indicators that we, uh, uh, we watch. The very first one is what we we're discussing earlier on, the size of the economy, okay? Is this economy growing or it is not growing? Yeah. We want an economy that grows because it is in the production of more maize that food is becoming available. It is in the production of copper that we know that taxes will be uh, produced. The transporters will be able to shift their, uh, their ports. Bankers will be employed because they must process their, their payments. So all those things that we do are determined by the side of the economy. The bigger the economy, the better. Another right now, as we said just a few moments ago, our economy is only about 60% of what it was 10, year, 10 years ago. So it is shrunk. That is not a good sign. It's a very bad sign. Another sign, uh, you're talking about inflation. Inflation, to simplify matters, is the pace at which prices are increasing. The pace at which prices are increasing. Measured, uh, the term for that, or the jargon for that, is inflation, yeah. Yeah. which CSO measures on monthly basis. Uh, 10 years ago, inflation was less than 10%. We had gotten used to uh, inflation rate of 6 7%. In fact, hardly anybody those days talked about uh, uh, price increments because it was not an issue. Right. Now, of course, yeah. now, of course, inflation is an issue. Prices are increasing. Uh, I think the worrying thing is that for the last six months or so, every month you find inflation is 20%, 23%. I think it's currently at about 23%, mm. which means uh, for the average commodity, if um, uh, the price for an item was, say, 10 quarter at the beginning of the year, by the end of the year, it would have more than doubled. Uh, right. That's what it means. And of course, uh, our salaries, our incomes, don't rise like that. They are more or less stagnant. So what it means is that with the money that we earn, increasingly, we earn less and less and less. That is why a hundred quarter today can no longer buy a bag of minimum mm -hmm. as it used to do in 2010, 2011, when a bag right. was about... Uh, the exchange rate of the quarter, which is, of course, another price. Uh, Ten years ago, the exchange rate of the quarter was about uh, 4.8 quarter to a dollar. 4.8 quarter to a dollar. So to buy $1,000, we needed 4,800 quarter. Can you imagine? Right. I wish I had a lot of dollars then. 4,000 quarter <laughs> bought you $1,000. You wish you were in Scotland. Yes. Today, the same 1,000 quarter, you must pay yeah. 23,000 quarter. Okay, yeah. 23,000 quarter. That's why those days, teachers, police officers, and so forth, were buying themselves cars, because if you imported a car from Japan, right. $2,000, a used car, it was only about 9,000 kwacha. 9,000 kwacha, a car of $2,000. The same right. car today, you are talking almost 50,000 kwacha. Where would the people? So, anyhow, that is a, a, another indicator of the issue of inflation. Um, for our young people, and I think for all of us who are parents, a very vital indicator is the employment rate. Right. There, where you are in Canada and Australia, uh, sorry, uh, you Scotland, 
you talk about an employment rate of three, four, five percent. By the time you get to eight percent, in other words, eight out of hundred people being out of a job, that is a crisis. That's what we have. Oh, yeah. 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 It is a crisis the government can form. Here, uh, I must say that this issue of unemployment, yes, it is getting worse now. Yes, it is getting worse now because of this crisis of overborrowing. But to be fair also, we must say that this is something that we fail to handle as a country from independence. The early days of independence in the 60s, uh, uh, my brother Mushade also, you remember, jobs were rising in the manufacturing. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. Doctor, he wasn't there. Where? Oh, no, no. I meant to say Chipakupak. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, was like I remember I that. Do I, look, do I look like General Chipakupak? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go re- ahead, Dr. Msokotone. Go ahead, sir. I'll just be yeah. like, uh, like Dr. Msokotone. I, 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 I think the beard makes you, the beard uh, makes you look, uh, look like a senior uh, citizen. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Msokotone. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Because, um, this is very interesting to our viewers. Those of you who are studying economics will send you you will send you a bill, an invoice, because this is a free lecture in economics. Free lecture in economics. So, so, Dr. Msokotwani, these are the serious indicators that things are not well. I will. Yes, I need to mention just one more. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. This is the issue of national indebtedness national indebtedness uh, the way to simplify matters again the way to test whether your economy is over indebted or too much in congolia or whether it is uh, reasonably reasonable is to compare the size of the congolia the debt to the size of the economy Okay? It's right. like compare how much you owe to the size of your salary. That's what it means. Mm. If what you owe is only a small fraction of what your salary is, no worries. Okay? No worries. You can pay in time. You pay on time. If you want, you can even pay it off. One go. But if the size of what you owe as a family or as an individual is, say, the size of your salary, then, of course, you risk the situation whereby every month the whole of your salary goes where to pay the debt, and then you have no food to feed, uh, you can't buy food to feed your family. So, similarly, at the national level, we talk about the level of debt in comparison to the size of the economy. Okay? Mm-hmm. What is the size of the debt compared to the size of the economy? Now, at the time when the PF took over, the level of the national debt, government right. debt rather, public debt, was uh, about 22%. It was about 22% of the, uh, uh, it was about 22% of the uh, size of the economy about 22% of the size of the economy. Right. 2011. Today, the size of the debt is almost equal to the size of the economy. That's serious. That is so a that's serious. situation where, that's situation which I said where I said, at the individual level, what you owe or what you need to pay every, every uh, month is almost the equivalent of the entire salary. At right. the national level, what we have today. And later, I think we'll be able to, before we talk about the solutions to this problem, mm-hmm. because this is, the, this is problem number one at the moment. We cannot make progress as a country unless we deal with this debt problem, this Congolese problem. Right. And I may have to talk about what does it mean for the ordinary person on the streets, you and me, the man in Chuampala, 
the man in uh, Mumba. If your government is so heavily borrowed, what does it mean for you as an individual? Is it a problem where you can say, ah, I don't care, it's not me or us, the government, or are you affected also at the individual level? We we'll need to discuss that. But let me stop okay. for now. I, I, I would do... I will pass over to Musha, but before I pass over to Musha, right. we want to be fair to the PF. The PF are saying the economy is bad because of climate change. The, con the PF is saying the economy is bad because of COVID. What's your comment, Dr. Msokotwana? Climate change is an issue. COVID is also an issue. But the truth of the matter is that uh, the PF is... Uh, exaggerating the extent to which these are uh, problems for a country. Right. Okay? Yeah. A highly exaggerating the effect of this. You ask yourself the question, why is it that there's no, there's no money to pay, uh, to pay the doctors, those who are st striking? Is it because the money has been diverted to go and uh, buy medicine for COVID? The answer is no. We are not paying the doctors. We are not hiring teachers. Uh, we are not mending some of the roads because most of the tax revenue is going to pay the Ngongole, okay? So the Ngongole is, uh, the debt is the number one problem. Even if, uh, even if COVID ends today, mm -hmm. as long as this debt is there, you will not be able to pay doctors. Uh, what is happening now, as you can see, is a panic situation. Doctors make noise, okay, find money to pay them something. Contractors make noise, oh, okay, find money to pay them. But this is like having a pair of trousers that is so badly done. You have uh, a whole... On the yeah, backside. So to mend that backside, you must cut on the knees to get a piece of cloth mend on your backside. So uh, this is the situation that we uh, find ourselves in. The problem is the debt. The problem is the debt. And the sooner the government accepts this reality instead of ducking around and making excuses on uh, COVID and so forth, that will not help us. We will that tackle will the debt. Us. We will tackle the debt. We will drill into the debt. We are trying to look at the indicators and the problem. Musha, any questions, sir? No, I think I think we are ready to go into into the debt. Really, we are already yeah. there, so we had better go into into it. Now, Doctor Msokotwane, we are we've been told that the kind of infrastructure they have built, and by infrastructure I mean they they built uh, flyover bridges in, in Lusaka. Uh, they've, they've, they've done all this and, and they've gone on to build what they are calling infrastructure, hospital. There is one in Petauke where, where, where Mr. Lungu comes from, Dr. Lungu comes from. In Petauke, they are calling it Kalindawalo Hospital. Very big structure. What effect would those structures have on an economy like Zambia? Would it help? Uh, it is always nice to have uh, infrastructure. Let's be fair and uh, level-minded. It's always good to have infrastructure. Right. Uh, and indeed, uh, if you drive around Osaka today, uh, there are certainly many roads that have been done. Gratis Road expanded and uh, several others. Well and good. But the point is that uh, this infrastructure needed deeper thinking mm -hmm. than what the government has done. What do I mean by deeper thinking? Deeper thinking meaning that, first of all, this infrastructure is the source of all this suffering that I was talking about caused by... Right. This has been borrowed money. Okay? So you have borrowed money to the extent whereby you do not say to yourself, what is the sustainable amount that I can borrow? You just 
or anyhow, it was like there was no goalkeeper in the treasure. <laughs> I was the keeper. The Mali keeper, the Mali keeper. Yeah, it was the economy of Igamba, the Mali keeper of economy. That's serious. That's very serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, we must remember that people were advising, please slow down. Right. Because we all knew that when you end up borrowing unsustainably, the end result is that there's going to be pain. Mm. There's going to be pain on the citizens. The right. pain that you see now, the high prices of commodities, the fact that doctors cannot be paid, the fact that now there are more than 1,000 young people who have trained to be teachers. 40,000 young people who have been trained to be teachers. And teachers are desperately needed because in a place like Liwa, typically from grade one to grade nine school, there are only three teachers. Three teachers from grade one to grade nine. So we need teachers. There are 40,000 of them that have been trained. But we can't hire them because there's no money. Where is the money going to? To pay the Congolese. Right. Okay. So this okay. is what I mean to say. We need yeah, to The infrastructure, think. Dr. Mutani, the infrastructure, there's this issue of the cost of putting this infrastructure, especially on the roads. What is your comment? Is, it, is this infrastructure being put at the right cost? Any of you? That would be something that an incoming UPN government we have to uh, let professionals, because we don't want to be vindictive, we don't want to be emotional, we want to allow the professionals, right? We want to allow the professionals to dig deep and say, the cost of these roads, mm. the cost of the uh, uh, radio stations or whatever it is, the cost of the, uh, uh, they need to be examined. Okay, right. they need to be examined to see whether there was value for money or not. So okay. that is very much be stated from very uh, in the outset. But let me come back to the issue of uh, the infrastructure and the justification for the overborrowing. So the question is: When you have nice roads in Osaka, but you're not able to pay the teachers. You're not able to hire the teachers. You're not able to buy desks for schools. If you go in some of these rural schools, you would cry because children are sitting on the floor, sitting on blocks, sitting in dust. Right. So you ask yourself the question, did we get the balance correct between the soccer roads and everything else in the economy? And you remember, these Lusaka roads. Mm. You go to the Copper Belt, those township roads, most of them are in ruins. Mm. Right. Go to the northern province of Zambia. The moment you leave Mpika to go to Nakonde, from what we've been seeing on social media, it's like right. canals. The road looks like a canal. So yeah. the question is, did we get the balance correct? The answer is no. Right. We should be modest in the type of investment we make in Osaka and these urban areas. Accept that. Yes, we need to improve some roads, but let's not forget about those schools in Chuampala, those right. schools in Mumba. In, in Milenge. Milenge as well, Milenge. don't you? Yes, Milenge. You look like uh, one of Bumbula Prima, my friend. <laughs> we haven't got enough time we will go oh. to drill on the debt and then the solutions of all these issues before we okay. do that one of the indicators which i would like our viewers to hear from you 10 years ago we must have had the reserves national reserves this is according to the little economies I've done, is the money which you keep for your emergence, for your import. 
What were the reserves in 2011 when you left government and what are the reserves at the moment? I think the reserves, I can't remember exactly, but it was about $3 billion. $3 billion. Indeed, as you say, oh, so, so, reserves... I, just, I just want to interrupt a little bit here. So when you say $3 billion, it means we had, like, in beer, $3 billion locked up somewhere in the bank. No, this is $3 billion. That's correct. Okay. And of course... The reserves and foreign currency, they will not sit in the Bank of Zambia. In the Bank of Zambia, will just be the numbers. That money will be seated in the Bank of England, to be seated in the... Uh, 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 those Swiss banks to be seated in the Federal uh, Reserve in the US. But yes, uh, it was hard cash that was available, about $3 billion. Uh, today, these figures are valuable. Uh, you can check the statistics from the Bank of Zambia. Uh, I think the last number that I saw, it had dropped from 3 billion to 1.1 billion. Yeah. And, 1. and, and to our that is enough money to pay for our imports probably for one month, if not two months. Am I right, Dr. Msokotan? Yeah, just about a month, I think. That's about a month. Okay. Fine. Now, the imp importance of this is that if we have reserves, if a catastrophe happens, you will not panic because you can, like your bank account, you can go and draw, uh, push the days forward. Similarly, if you have reserves and the exchange rate is getting funny, like what it has been, the central bank can draw on dollars and put so into the, in the market to stabilize the exchange rate. But where it is, it's 1.1 billion. It is even dangerous for the Bank of Zambia to draw on that because it is already too little. Supposing there's going to be a draw, then what happens? So, uh, yes, the reserves have basically uh, disappeared uh, very significantly. Okay, now let's move on very, very quickly, Dr. Mstokotwani. I was in the, in, in, the, in the team, not in the team which handed over in 1991. UNIP had borrowed. MMD came in. You borrowed a bit, but the donors were very good to you. MMD government, not you, but the Fr Fr Frederick Chilubans government. Mm -hmm. Then there was a cancellation of debt, which I fought very hard for in Scotland. It took us nine years to campaign. Zambia's mm -hmm. debt was cancelled. I think during that time, Dr. Dr. Mkokotwane was an advisor to the Levy government, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, that's correct. Yeah. So what was the date in, 2000 and, uh, in 2011? What is the date now? And where is this date from? The date that was cancelled by the donors, the level was at about $7.3 $7 billion, right? Wow. You mean, no, doctor, billion. Doctor, I, want, I want us to digest this news a little bit. So donors forgave us. Seven point three billion dollars in Congo. Yes, not hundred percent, but uh, I think I would say roughly about ninety percent. So right. probably after the forgiveness, there was only between less than a billion dollars of owing that we that we okay. that we had. So, so, yeah, so very all, little. I mean, it was Congole. They they forget so so we did not have a lot of Nkongole when they forgave us. No. When we they forgave us right. 7.3 and then given the size of the economy was actually right. quite a lot. Right. But uh yeah, it was quite a lot. We we're failing to pay. But where the debt sits now, the external debt, at about uh uh, if we follow the government uh, information, about $15 billion. Do you trust the government? Do you trust the government figures? Well, when we come in, we have to do an audit of by ourselves. Right. We wish a statement to say, the government say, this is the Congola they left. We've gone through the books by our findings, collaborated by the people who we owe, 
the right. actual level is so much. Okay, I think now, that is the standard. Let's 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 break it down, Doctor Tawatoni. When you talk of debts, there is the, ex the external debt and the internal debt. Can you tell our viewers what that means? Yes. Uh, the $15 billion that I was talking about, this is what we owe uh, people outside Zambia. Okay? okay? People outside Zambia. Yeah. If we include the debt that we uh, owe people in Zambia, in other words, the debt that we owe the foreigners plus the debt that the Zambian government owes to the people here in Zambia, like right. the suppliers uh, uh, to various things, those who buy treasury bills, uh, contractors, when we put all that together, local and foreign, it comes to about $20 billion, okay? okay. So that is, that, is, that is a conservative estimate, right? And the number could be more that's because the government has not been forthcoming. The number could definitely be more, and I think it's going to be more, because these numbers that we are talking about, of course, we are fond, uh, following the accounting uh, uh, rules. But remember, there are also institutions and people who have taken or are likely to take the Zambian government to court and may right. well win. Right. Example, those Libyans who bought uh, Zamtel, yeah. there's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's no doubt about the fact that they paid $400 million. We know that. Lab, Lab Green, yeah. Lab Green, am I right? Lab Green, yes. Yes. Government took over the assets and they're not paid. So, in all probability, we are going to have to pay. Then recently, this quarrel with the KCM, uh, the quarrel with the KCM, they right. put it on liquidation as well. Uh, that is also likely to be uh, another very serious case. Another billion. If we lose that, yeah, if you lose that, you might as well end up adding another billion to what we owe. Okay. Then there's the Mopani copper mines. Uh, theoretically, it says ZCCM is going to pay $1 billion right. to the former owners, $1 billion to the former owners right. using the process from copper. In other words, you sell copper, then you pay those people. But, but, you can't rule out the possibility that the system may not be able to pay us that loan. Right. Okay. Okay. You can rule out the possibility that the system may fail to pay that million dollars. If the system fails, the previous owners will come to the Zambian government and say, you are the owners of this company. Pay. Right. So, all I was saying that indeed, the local debt, the foreign debts added together, it comes to about $20 billion. But bear in mind the fact that some of the action that we've taken may as well lead us into a situation whereby we may have to pay heavy compensation that could add another $2 billion or more to what we already owe. It will depend now, on how the cases, is like you, how you handle this. Now, let's break down the debt. 15 billion estimates. Where is this debt from? We hear of the euro bonds and we hear of the Chinese bonds, uh, sorry, Chinese loans. And we hear also of the bilateral of IMF and World Bank. Can you break it down for us, Dr. Dr. Sokotan? Yeah, I don't have the precise numbers in my yeah. hands, but uh, the major the major institution that we owe is the euro bond holders, as you said. Mm -hmm. Then um, there's a significant amount from the Chinese. 
Mm. There's also a significant amount of money uh, to a number of local banks here or the affiliates abroad. We owe quite a lot. Um, then there's also, um, I think those, there's also money that we owe to uh, countries. The Osaka roads that we are talking about, this is a loan from, uh, this is a loan from India. Uh, similarly, the, yeah, there are a number of loans that we collected from other governments before they realized that, oh, this is uh, almost chipping over the cost of our borrowing. So, of course, most of them are put back. Uh, right. So, this, this is where we're borrowing. This is where we're borrowing. Yeah. The, now, the, the, the euro bonds and the Chinese loans, Zambia defaulted. We failed to pay our interest. It's not the principal, it's the interest. So what happens if we don't pay? And we've been negotiating with the IMF to give us a, what I think is the bridging loan. Why hasn't IMF given us the loan? Yes, um, the amount of, um, the way to deal, I mean, first of all, as I said earlier on, we need to f find a solution to this debt because as long as it's where it is, we'll not be able to pay doctors, teachers, buy medicines and so forth. So we need to find a, a way to resolve it. What is the way to resolve it? The very first step is to ask these people to extend the period of payment, to lengthen the period of payment. Because when you do that, it means every year, you pay a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, but over a longer period of time, okay? Right. Now, to do that, that's what they call uh, restructuring the debt in the jargon. Um, but to do that, to do that, if I owe you money and they come to you say, my friend, you're accounted for Mumba. Uh, <laughs> we fought battles before, but let's forget about that now. Uh, I owe you this money. Can you allow me to pay over a longer period of time? You ask, you look at me and say, this chap from Kalawa, can I trust him? Can I Confident. trust that if I give him a time, he's actually going to pay? Wait. At we show yeah. unique and anchor. Uh -huh. <laughs> or is it the case that when I allow him to pay for a longer period of time, that's now when he's going to go out uh, and buy another suit, buy another this, suit, buy that, buy that, and buy that. I'm a suit in and a buy day. another suit yeah. or marry another one. Uh, whatever the case. So. Right. You need to be convinced. You need to be convinced before you extend that uh, privilege of me paying uh, over a longer period of time. You need to be convinced that I'm responsible enough. You're right. Now, how do I? How do you get convinced? You get convinced by getting a neutral person to say, "Ah, okay, me, I'm a neutral person. I'm monitoring these people. I think they've changed their bad ways." So mm -hmm. please help that neutral person is the IMF. Okay, that neutral person is the IMF. So in essence, we need a stamp of approval mm. from the IMF, which says we've oh, examined okay. the way we are conducting the economy. We now believe that uh, they are responsible enough. Please extend the repayment period. Definitely, you'll be able to pay you back. Now, for the IMF to give a stamp of approval, they must be convinced that you've changed your bad ways. Otherwise, they themselves will get a bad name. At, at and, that's the uh -huh. and that's where the problem is now, because our government is failing to convince the IMF that they've changed from bad practices of managing the financial resources of the country. This is where the impasse is. The IMF is right. not convinced. So as long as the IMF is 
convinced. We cannot convince the people that we owe money to extend the period, the payment period, mm -hmm. or even to some of the debts. They cannot because we are irresponsible. Now, how can, now, how can you be convinced? How can you be convinced that uh, you are failing to pay your loans back when you are throwing money in the streets and when you are buying a big jet uh, and, and, and big cars for the ministers? I mean, who would think you you you, you know you, you you are spending more than what you have? And uh, Musha, we want to hear more about what the UPND plans to do. Do you have any questions before we go to that, Musha? Because no. we haven't yeah. had enough time. So, so now I think I think most of your colleagues, uh, Doctor Doctor Msogotwane, um, are still in government today. Okay, now I don't want you to be, you know, ratting on them or, or whatever it is, but in your estimate, where is the problem? Is it the problem of policy, like the patriotic front policy? Is it that President Lungu just has no clue? Um, where, where, where is the issue? The issue in my assessment is that. Uh, uh, the government felt or had this misconception that development is about borrowing money and showing off roads. Okay? Roads, so, so that then makes roads, it a political want, problem, right? It's, it's political party real. Uh, um, yes, it is a political priority. problem. Okay. Yes. I mean, we hear it from the. Uh, the, uh, the colleagues in the PF saying that uh, we are going to win easily because uh, we've already transformed the country, we've showed the development. They keep quiet about the negative impact of the borrowing, the project, right. the infrastructure. They were convinced that, they were convinced that by putting infrastructure in Rusaka, mm -hmm. voters were going to a clean, and swift mandate. Of course, they did not take into account the fact that when you borrow money like this, it's going to bring pain on the citizens. Right. It's going to cause the prices to increase. It's going to cause you failing to pay doctors. They did not take that into account in spite of the fact that advice was always being given in Parliament, professional economists, international economists. Right. They the way to go to win elections is uh, this infrastructure at whatever cost. Now, now there, there are all these plans that the president announces together with his minister of, uh, of finance. Uh, so, so I've even lost count. Uh, from 2015, there is the, is it the sixth, seventh national development plan and then there was the other one, which they were calling COVID development plan. And now they are negotiating for the eighth national development plan. What does this all mean? Are they, are they attending to the economy or what's going on there, Dr. S there's another one. There's another one, Musha, called the Economic Recovery Plan, ERP. What, what yes. do all these things mean? I think all this are meant to uh, address the problem that I imagine the economy. But unfortunately, they are all premised on government spending the money that it does not have. What the government should have done, if the idea right. was to spend lots, should have looked at the production side of the economy. Right. How do we make the mines produce more? How do we make sure that we earn more money from tourism? How do we make sure that we earn more money from agriculture? When you have earned the money, then you can spend. But we can't right. just be spending, spending, spending. In the meantime, the sector that should be giving you money, like the mines and so forth, they are going down. That is a contradiction. That's why those plans that we are talking about can never lead anywhere. They can never lead anywhere. It's like you as a family, uh, instead of you know, 
uh, instead of worrying about uh, you having a job or having a business, that is, uh, you just talk about, oh, we are going to borrow money for a car. We are going to borrow money for a house. In the meantime, right. you're retrenched. Or in the meantime, uh, the, the, your employer says, sorry, I have no money. I can only right. pay you half of the salary. It's a contradiction. How can you spend when, when your income is going down? That right. makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Now, now one more, one more thing. We only have about eight more minutes, and so we want to shift gears a little bit. And I think uh, General Chipapu is going is going to 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 help us there. But is there a plan? Is there a way out of this confusion? Out of this mess? Yes, there is a clear way. The way is what uh, the way forward is what I described earlier on. Yeah. First thing, get the relief because we can't keep on not paying our doctors. We can't not keep on teachers. So we need to stretch the period of paying these loans that we've collected right. so that we can save some cash and be able to do other things other than do saccharides. Okay. To do that, we need to conclude the discussions with the IMF, convince them that we have left the bad ways, and we are going to do that ourselves. The target that we have is within three to five months, we should conclude all these issues about uh, being stressed by debt. We should conclude that within three to five months. Hopefully, right. even within, we should get that out of the way. Right. That would be a bit of relief. That will give us a bit of relief because we save some cash by extending the period repayment. Right. But that is not all. Under UPND, we don't just aspire to be a country that has finally managed to uh, uh, get relief from the creditors. That is not enough because right. our aim is to go beyond, make sure that the children, your children, my grandchildren, are in jobs, right. okay? So the issue is, we are going to make sure that mining sector is going to expand. Right. The sector has been stagnant in the last 10 years. Our co colleagues from the North, the Congolese, they used to produce about 600,000 tons of copper. Mm -hmm. Now they produce 1.4 million tons of copper. Times 10 times $10,000 per uh, ton. Mm -hmm. The price of copper is now extremely good. Right. The best that I've ever had in the last 10 years. But do we feel the impact in Zambia? No. Why not? Because we are not selling enough copper. You can only get the price to affect you positively if there's something that we are selling. So we are going to push very hard to make sure that our mining sector moves from producing 850,000 tons. Right. We want to be able to 3 million tons of copper per annum. Okay? Right. 3 million tons of copper per annum, which means that from copper alone, we should be earning $30 billion a year. $30 billion a year. We are being ambitious, okay? Right. We are being ambitious, but we know this can be done. This can be done, I can assure you, this can be done. Right. We are going to deal with the issue that Chipak uh, talks about a lot on agriculture, okay? We are going to make sure that items like cotton, Things that make shirts, that make bed sheets, that make towels, that make bandages, that make vests. We are going to invest tremendously into our cotton sector. Not that we want to export raw cotton, but so that those factories of those years, like the ones that used to be in Livingstone, you are not there yet, Amish. Uh, <laughs> Economic. Ah, we. Livingstone was going to be 
the textile, the textiles headquarters of Zambia. Not so long, uh, at Papua. Very yeah, true, and Kafue, and Kafue too. And Kafue, yes. Yeah. I want to make sure that the cotton industry, and you know those people, where you are there in Scotland, in Canada, chaps buy a shirt for summer, next year they will not wear it, they will buy another mm -hmm. one. So, yeah. by, the, by the way, Dr. Msokotwan, by the way, Dr. Yeah. Msokotwan, where I am at home now, I'm only uh, 300 meters away from the the world's school of textile, the oldest school of textile in the world, is only 300 meters away from me. So adding value on our cotton is an area where we have failed. I think we will have to do more. Now, okay. Mucha, Mucha, we haven't got enough time. Out of our budget, Dr. Mkotwan, how much is going to save debt? Uh, the best way to describe that is that out of every quarter of revenue that we receive, I think this description will make more sense. Yep. Out of every quarter that ZRA collects in uh, revenues, right? 90% of that, or 90 of every quarter collected goes right. to both salaries of public service workers and debt services. Only 10 way remains. Okay. Debt service alone is about, uh, I think, about 33 way in every quarter that is collected. And right. Then the balance is about, uh, uh, I can't remember exactly, goes to pay public se sector workers. But the two of them combined, Debt service and salaries of public workers. Nineteen way of every quarter of revenue collected. That's where right. it goes. But wow. let me just complete the issue of. Uh, uh, I talked about the copper mines. I talked about the textiles. Uh, UPND was very ambitious to localize the production of components that we use in the mining sector. Right. The those, those sort of things. The mines import about six hundred million dollars worth of components every year. We want to make sure that at least half of that is produced in Zambia because that's the only way we're going to create jobs. Mining, as you know, is now become capital intensive. It's not like those days when you would employ hundreds of thousands of uh, miners. Things have changed. Right. But those that you've lost underground, you can create them on the ground through factories that produce components that go in the mining sector. So these are just examples of what we'll do in the sectors, make them produce more so that they can employ more people, so that they can pay more taxes. Okay. Before before we conclude, Musha, are there any comments or can you bring in one or two people? Who are ready to say something? All right. So, because we have quite a lot of comments, this is what I'll do. I'll go to the to what Facebook calls stars comments. Stars yeah. comments. So the stars comments means, um, uh, Doctor Doctor Msokotwani. So this program works in collaboration with Facebook. Uh, so so the listeners are, are supposed to buy stars from Facebook, and then send stars to us as a television. It's a very creative way of making Mark uh, Zuckerberg rich. Not a way of making Chipapapaku rich at all, no. He will still remain the same Chipapapaku from Moon, but it's no for Mark's riches. So, so I'm going to read from the stars' comments. Kelvin Chanda Kafrimbi, yeah. is what he's saying, very simplified for the average person to understand the fiscal mismanagement, meaning he's very grateful, Dr. Msokotwani, that you have made things very, very easy for an ordinary person to understand. The next comment is from Guan Mwale, also a star sender. Gotta give a hand to the chemistry between Vamusha and Vachipakupaku. And there is chemistry. 
I don't know. Uh, but it would be nice to have a regular contributor like my general from the ruling party, a woman. Anyway, they're welcome if they can join us. But we want people that can contribute something. Not to Guisa Femukubata. Yeah, because here we have Dr. Musokotuane contributing. If you feel go back, feel very clear. We don't want a person to come. Isn't it general? Well, there's a big challenge here. Bring it on. Let's bring in that Benedict from, from PF. She, 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 she claims to be very, very uh, smart. Let's bring her on. Uh, right. we, we would welcome anybody from PF. Uh, to have a, a very good discussion. This is for the sake of our country, by the way. Right. So if there's anybody from PF who thinks they can explain why they've been spending money on roads, why our people are hungry, why they've borrowed so much money, give us your name. We'll have you All tomorrow. Right. Dr. Msokotwane, there is one more question. How long do you think it will take us to recover? How long? That, this question is from Noel Siamondo, also a star sender to our program. Uh, I would say that, the, as I said earlier on, the issue of debt relief, we are hoping that between three and five months we can sort that out. Uh, right. The impact on the economy for people to begin to feel that, uh, uh, because what we want is income to start rising. Uh, right. Yeah, so that a dollar is no longer, I mean, buying a thousand dollars is no longer like a sentence of going to, uh, to hell, as we feel right now. Uh, within two, three years, I think we should get that uh, underway. Two, three years, we should to feel the impact of uh, so that. So that, that pressure will be relieved and, and, and prices will start lowering down. And, and that, 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 that chance is that that is the time period when when we will be getting things stabilized and prices start coming down. Am I right, Dr. Dr. Tony? Some prices may uh, some prices may come down, but most likely what is going to happen that the quarter incomes will rise without causing inflation. In other words, what I'm saying is that. The quarter incomes, salaries in quarter, yeah. profits in quarter will go up, but without uh, causing uh, inflation. Without causing inflation. All right. Uh, Thank if, you. If I, if I simplify that further, it might mean that uh, uh, while my salary increases, the dollar quarter exchange rate remain stable. I hope you are following what I'm saying. It's not, yeah. Don't expect the quarter to go to five, six, uh, seven quarter to a dollar. That is probably unlikely to happen. Perhaps also cause damage. But expect our quarter incomes to rise while the dollar remains more or less stable. So, so that is a catching up effect. Yeah. I Thank hope you. I'm not Thank you. Too, too no, no, you've been you've been very clear. Now we must, I just brought in uh, some of our friends of the program, Mr. Jerome Kanik, Kanika, who is our resident pharmacist. We are so privileged here, Dr. Msokotwani, that we have a resident pharmacist so that uh, if anything goes wrong, the resident pharmacist will immediately... Do, do pharmacists prescribe? No. Yeah, they prescribe. Come on, Musha. They do. In case you've got a headache, they'll tell you which, which manquara to use. No, no. Now, now you are using... No, no, no. That kind of medicine is not practiced in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> you are using the Chiwempala kind of medical practice where you just go to a well, pharmacist. I think, I think it's the doctors which who prescribe. These guys tell you exactly the dosage of what you need. But at times they, they can prescribe. So, yeah. Jeremy, so yeah. what is your we also have Andrew Butcher, but I don't think we can take any further questions. But I just okay. want to acknowledge some of the star senders. We've got Piri Archangel Peter. We've got Mia Admini. Is this your real name or it's 
it's your 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 Facebook now. Mia Admini, thank you. We've got Olga Dasi, Livian Hamuntibi, Helen Chakota, Noel Siamondo, Movita Mwala, Mambo Tula, James Musalilua Lusambo, Likando Mufalali, Chris Cleovis Banda, Akim Kayamba, Liu Twe Steven, Talking Entrepreneurship, Ephraim Kalaluka, Elvis Movita, Muzundu Tovin, Peter Simango, Real Solomon Banda, Bernard Sinkala, David Lungu, Wellington Chawala, Chisanga Mwamba, Nelson Uyoya, Eric Sia Lianda, Wute Lukama Luther the Seventh, Moses Chansa, Jack Sungwebweute, Handa Nicholas, Elvis Chisanga, Gonga Maikov, Frisco Mulosa, Helen Chakota. Thank you to all the star senders. Thank you so much. General just to wind up, just to wind up, I just wanted to say on behalf of Muncha and our viewers, thank you so much, Dr. Msokotwani. We know you are to travel from your constituency to come back to Lusaka because we wanted you to be there, to be here with us. And I think you have simplified things. Right. And for me, personally, I can't wait and see that day when you start tackling the debt and start you know, re-engineering our, our economy for our people to get relief. That's what I can say to say thank you so much for taking the time. Musha, what do you think? We should be bringing the, the doctor as our resident economist every week. What do you think? We, we are going to do that, but we know probably after after the elections, because we think that the UPND is, is winning, and so he'll be too busy for us. And then he's campaigning in the U.S., busy campaigning in the U.S., so we are going to do this, but we'll be phoning him. Yeah, so basically, thank you so much, Dr. Msokotwani, and thank you so much to our viewers, and it's over to Musha. Yeah, uh, thank you. We cannot take um, uh, more, more calls. I'm going to just bring our friends here that are here so that you see... Uh, Dr. Msokotwani, that there are so many people that we are following you today, and some of them are on the screen right now. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, this has been TV Bakwetu, General Chipakupaku, and our guest, Dr. Msokotwani. And I've got to sign off now. God bless you, and God bless our country. I will urge, as usual, those that are part of this broadcast here to remain behind the scenes and General Chipakupaku has um, a, a little more discussion for us. Thank you very much. God bless you and God bless our country. And good thank night. you so thank much, Dr. Thank, for thank you. It was a pleasure. And uh, good night. Please good night. Keep this good good night. Thank you. Thank you.